Good morning my friend, great to have you on my channel. Today I'm taking you on a narrated walking tour of the new Jalan Bukit Kukus extension from Bukit Jambu to Paya Trubong and back. Let's start our walk at the direction signboard. The new Jalan Bukit Kukus does not yet have a route number but the old Jalan Paya Trubong which connects Paya Itam to Relal is Federal Route 220. Jalan Tunsadon to Balik Pulau is State Route P14. If you are new to my channel, my name is Timothy and I provide place information on my website Penang Travel Tips. Recently, I have also started creating narrated walking tours for my YouTube channel Discover with Timothy. Today, we start our walk from Bukit Jambu. To give you an idea of today's route, let me show you on the map. We will walk up Jalan Bukit Kukus and cross the Jalan Tun Sadong Viaduct. We will detour down the ramp to view the viaduct from below. Then we will cross the Jalan Tun Sadong Viaduct again to Jalan Bukit Kukus. When we reach the old Jalan Pai Trubong, we will turn around and head back to Bukit Jambung. In designing this new road, the state authorities has ensured that there is sufficient road shoulders for cyclists as well as for walkers and joggers. So, it is possible to go for a walk or a cycle on the new Jalan Bukit Kukus. This is going to be a rather long walk. If you wish to fast forward to specific sites, I have placed timestamps in the description. Also, if you are viewing this on mute, you may turn on closed caption and follow me through the subtitles. And if you enjoy narrated walking tours, please take a moment to like and share this video so that your friends may also have a chance to enjoy it. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be updated of my latest videos. We are now on the flyover above Lobo Bukit Jambu. We will see the road below us in a short while. So that's Lobo Bukit Jambu below. If you are coming down Jalan Bukit Kukus from Ayi Itam, you need to make a U-turn to reach Lobo Bukit Jambu on route to Relau. I am doing this walk on the first morning that the Jalan Kukus extension was open to traffic. I had wanted to do it on the opening day, but by the time the Chief Minister officiated its opening, it was already late morning and too hot to do a walk. If you want to do a walk along this road, make sure you come early like around 8am. You will notice that I'm walking from Bukit Jambu towards Paya Trubong. It's not coincidental. I am going against the direction of the sun. If you want to get the best shot, always walk with the sun behind you. That way, I can be assured of blue skies. The best time of the year to do any walking in Penang is January. That's when you are most likely to get clear blue sky and cool morning air. It's still okay to do it in February, but you will notice that the number of overcast days will increase going into February, March and April. Right now it's 8.20 in the morning, 
The air is cool and the sun is just coming up. You will notice that there are more cars coming down the road than going up. That's the morning rush hour traffic. Penang is like an hourglass. In the morning, traffic flows from north to south and in the evening, it flows the other direction. Taking a look at the new drainage for the road, there is a series of pipes under the road to take up the excess water and drain it away. This stretch of Jalan Bukit Kukus has a speed limit of 60 km per hour, though I wonder whether anybody is observing it. To correct this road, they had to cut through the hill. We can see the bare rocks over here. The sun is finally coming up, but the air is still cool. Yesterday, by the time the road opened to traffic, it was already high noon and too hot for a walk. I'm glad I postponed it to today, for the weather is simply gorgeous now. It's a sharp bend over here. I'm happy that the authorities installed a concrete barrier with arrow signages to prevent people from going off the road. Is Jalan Bukit Kukus easy to walk? I think so. The incline is not very steep, so if you are reasonably fit, you should have no problem walking it. I expect that pretty soon, this will become a popular road for morning walks. Another water drainage channel here.
When walking along this road, you will notice that the pedestrian pavement is level while there is a side shoulder for rainwater to flow away. This will reduce water collecting on the pedestrian pavement. Although the road itself is completed and open to traffic, there are still workmen around and various forms of construction work is ongoing at various places. There seems to be some form of construction at this side of the road. If I find out what this is about, I will add the information to Penang Travel Tips and share with you guys. The junction has already been created here, though presently it leads to nowhere. Once I find out what will manifest itself here, I will update on my website. The famous elevated junction and viaduct to Jalan Tun Sadon is coming into view. I think by now, most people in Penang already know that Jalan Bukit Kukus has the tallest elevation of any road pillars in Malaysia, narrowly surpassing the previous record holder, the Rabah Bypass, by about 2 meters. That road pillar in question refers to the one on the Jalan Tun Sadaw Vahadang, which we will see in a short while. I can see two lanes in front of me. Should I take the outer lane or inner lane? So far there are no signages telling me not to use the outer lane, but I don't want to get yelled at by a workman. So for now, I will take the inner lane. We are coming to the Jalan Tun Sadon Junction. Going straight will take you to Federal Route 220, onwards to Paya Trubong, Far Lim and Ayat Itam. Turn left takes you to Jalan Tun Sadon on State Route B14 to Balik Pulau.
Now let's pan across to view the entire length of the Jalan Tun Sado Viaduct. Moving on, let's cross the Jalan Tun Sadom Viaduct now. The tallest pillar on the Jalan Tun Sadong Vadang is the one that put Jalan Bukit Kukus on the map. It is 61.5 meters from the ground to street level or 59.4 meters from the pile caps. Moving on, let's cross the Jalan Tun Sadong Viaduct now. Let's take a look at the stupendous view from here. That's the high rises of Relau spread out before us. Let's do a 360 degree pan of this spot.
there's a speed limit of 50 km per hour across the viaduct. There is a new elevated ramp connecting Jalan Payatrubong to Jalan Tunsadong. The pedestrian pavement is coming to an end. I have to cross the road to reach the other side.
be very careful, check the road is clear and cross. And we are on the other side. And this is the view of the ramp and the Jalan Tun Sadong Vaida. Now let's walk down the ramp to get a closer view of those gigantic pillars. Can you see? The tallest of them all. I have reached the end of the ramp and I think on turning back, I will use the outer lane for a change.
taking another look at the view of Ralao from here. And now comes the tricky part. I need to cross to the opposite side of the road. But how do I do that? I will have to cross in front. Okay, be very careful now. Cross to the middle. There is no road shoulder here, so I have to hurry along until the pavement appears again. To be very conspicuous to motorways, I'm wearing a fluorescent green t-shirt looking like a human's tobacco. Now I wait for the road to clear and cross.
can catch a glimpse of the old Jalan Paya Trubong down below. Here we get a good view of the Payatrubon ravine which necessitates the construction of this vada.
we have returned to the T junction. We shall turn left here to see where the new road ends. Pause here to take another look at those gigantic pillars. We have reached the end of the Jalan Bukit Kukus extension. At the moment, Jalan Bukit Kukus is fragmented. In addition to this new stretch, there are two disjointed segments of the road which perhaps in the future will all be joined as one. 
I will now cross to the road divider. If you are going from Paya Trubong to Relau, meaning not to Bukit Jambung, you may negotiate this U-turn to continue on Jalan Paya Trubong. The purpose of the U-turn is to provide true traffic for those heading north from Jalan Bukit Kukus without having to stop at a junction. The signboard says turn right to Paya Trubong, but in fact there is no right turn because that particular stretch of Jalan Kekukus has not been built yet. Until that portion is completed, motorists have to continue on the old Jalan Paya Trubong. This empty clearing will be the location for the next stretch of Jalan Kekukus. In the interim, traffic will enter the newly opened stretch of Jalan Bukit Kukus from Jalan Paya Trubong. Traffic from Jalan Bukit Kukus can also enter Jalan Paya Trubong heading south towards Relau. We have reached the northernmost portion of the newly completed Jalan Bukit Kukus extension and now I will head back to Bukit Jambu. This section of the highway does not have the inner and outer pedestrian lane, so I have to use the only one available. The inner pedestrian lane starts here. You can see there's an opening in the barrier for people to move in and out. But before I continue, I want to take one more look at the viaduct.
The sun is coming up and judging from the cloudless sky, it's going to be another hot day. But for now, there's a nice wind blowing, so the walk is actually quite pleasant.
let's cross to the other side of the road. On this side, we can have a good view of the hill that was cut away. Just look at all the solid rock.
we are nearing the end of the Jalan Bukit Kukus extension. Right ahead is the flyover at Lebo Bukit Jambu, and this is the most dangerous portion as the road shoulder disappears. And then the bicycle lane also disappears. It's quite a shame that the road design does not allow space for both the curb and bicycle lane from end to end, making it very dangerous for pedestrians and cyclists. I need to make sure there are no cars heading down the road before I make a dash around this bend. finally reached the end of this walk. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Jalan Bukit Kukus. I hope to see you again in my next narrated walk. Until then, see ya!